Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the collector's edition of Core 2021. Okay, where to begin? Now, the collector's edition I think is kind of a scam. You're paying for much less product, right, in terms of cardboard printed. You're paying for less, 66% less. You're paying a higher price, sometimes two times, three times, four times the price of a normal box. But when I look at Grim Tudor, and I look at the regular one, and I look at the Ugin, I look at the Borderless and versus the Showcase versus the Standard, um, you do have to kind of come to the conclusion that yes, in this particular case, Core 2021 will be worth buying. Collector's edition. I'm still going to stand by what I said about uh, Front of the Elder Inn, Collector's edition. Outside of that giant heads, that great heads, there's not that many cards that are playable in EDH. Brazen Borrow. I mean, their cards have been reprinted. It's, it's a mess because your one chase card, Mythic Oko, is gone. And once upon time your chase rare is gone and they were banned. So good luck using them because you won't be able to. Now, Pharos Beyond Death, I still think is a horrendous product. I do not like it. I've never liked it, nor will I ever like it as any type of investment or even holding. I would not touch that at all. Same reasons. Most cards are not playable in eternal formats. Therefore, having a special version of that card doesn't really make any sense. It's kind of like Utter End when Utter End had a very expensive promo card because it was being played in standard and now no one plays it. But we knew that no one would play it because no one played it previously. No, it was not being played in modern previously. So, I mean, why would they start playing it now after it rotates out in standard? The collector's boxes were good. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to BS it. I... For Core 2021, oh, I, I missed Ikoria. Ikoria is really companions. And I can tell you, having played MTG Arena, the companions are extremely nerfed. Like, neutered. These companions are not very... It costs free mana to put them into your hand, which... For these aggro companion decks, so I don't know... I haven't played a... Um, a, a, a mid-range or a long game, a control companion. Maybe they were fairly better. But for the aggro ones, which are the ones that are rampaging around, the cycling one and then the sacrifice outlet. So essentially, Lewis the Nightmare Cat, whatever decks are playing him, or they want to be fast. They want to bury you really quickly. So having the extra turn, at least the decks I'm playing, Red Deck Wins, is really good. You know, it's like, whoa, I can beat you now on the draw. Like, it's 50-50 in the draw, and if I'm going to play, I'm going to beat you 90-10. Collector's editions make sense to me if they have long-term viability. They make absolutely no sense to me personally if you're just using them in standard. Because after rotation, and we're going to see this. We already started out with Oko. You can take a look at his showcase card, his uh, box topper card, or Once Upon a Time. Because as soon as cards cannot be played in standard, and they don't have playability in EDH or internal, what do you think happens to their price? Duh, it's called rotation. And we haven't really experienced rotation on, a, on these uh, collector's packs, collector's editions. So uh, it will, I think it will tank even more. I like Grim Tutor. I completely forgot it was a card until it got reprinted. It's legit. Uh, them pr reprinting it is absolutely great. Every EDH deck I own now can have a Grim Tutor, a uh, Grim uh, Tutor in it. And yeah. Lily looks good. Teffy looks good. The White Planeswalker looks kind of oh, matte to me, but who knows. Ugin is obviously a very good, very, very good colorless planeswalker. His alternative art looks good. His showcase art, his showcase looks good. 
the extended art, whatever that blue one looks a lot better. It looks very similar to the Fate promo, which is a very expensive Fate promo. Now it might be a lot cheaper, but at the same time, I can use it now, which is great because I'm sure, you know, Ugin will be used and I have promos. I have the um, Fate Reforged uh, promo pack version, the very expensive one, and now I can finally use them. Whenever a card gets reprinted, it's actually pretty cool to have like a special version of it because now it's a kind of like when Lightning Bolt comes back, then everyone can dust off their uh, old Lightning Bolts, their Beta Lightning Bolts, their Alpha Lightning Bolts, and then start playing. I guess Alpha would probably not. It has been very interesting. Like all I needed to really see was Grim Tutor to know what was going to happen. Wow. Grim Tutor, huh? <laughs> Jeez. What a uh, what a card. Seriously, what a card to reprint. And who could have predicted, you know, who could have predicted that? I not me for sure, right? Um what a card. And Azusa, and this is exactly what a core set should be. You find one chase card, because every card, every set I think should have one chase card where it's just so expensive and people know that this is the card that people want. And that makes sense. It would be the Grim Tutor. It, it has to be playable. The problem I have with the collector's editions are so far Ikoria, Pharaohs Beyond Death, and Throne of the Alderaan. None of those cards are typical. I mean, maybe 2%, maybe 1% of those cards after rotation have any playability long term. Here, I can point out Lily will probably have playability. Teffy definitely will. Grim Tutor, 100%. Ugin, 100%. Azusa, 100%. These are known items because they're reprints. So Core 2020 didn't really have like that great of a reprint in terms of value at least. But whoa, look at, I mean, this is just crazy, crazy valuable. And I like, I love it. it. It's the way that it should be. It should be this way. Um, cards that are very valuable should be reprinted. And it just brings a smile because Grim Tutor is such a great card. And now people get to enjoy it. And it's not like a million dollars. The collector's edition, who knows what that price will be. Maybe maybe that one will be over 100 I guess we'll see. It's kind of hard to tell right now. But in the future, this is exactly what they should continue to do. I don't see any reason they should not do this. Just find one very valuable card. Reprint it. Reprint a bunch of semi-valuable cards like Ugin, Azusa. Print some new Planeswalkers, right? And then you're off. I mean, why is it such a difficult formula? This is obviously what they should have been doing this whole time. Singles, always better. So I'm not saying that we should all open collector's boxes of this. But this is way, way better than Ikoria. Ikoria is trash now. It's way better than Pharaoh's Beyond Death, which has always been trash. Throne of the Eldrin was really good until they banned Oko and Once Upon a Time. Like, what's... Oh, I pulled the Chase Mythic. Oh, now I can't use it. So that's exactly what it is, right? It's what happened to Oko and Once Upon a Time, even though they were banned, so it's the, the opposite effect, right? But they're still not playable in Standard or in Eternal Formats, which is exactly what's going to happen during rotation to the rest of the cards in it. So, pretty interesting, right? Pretty interesting thing. And when you talk about this, um, they made it, they did a good, whatever, you know, whatever. I'm going to give them credit where credit is due. You know, I don't like Wizard Coast very much. Um, I'm going to give them credit where credit is due. They did a good job. They did a fantastic job. It, it just couldn't be better. They, they picked the one card that made most sense. They kept Azusa as a, as a rare, which I appreciate because they could have easily tried to get more money and make her a mythic. 
what a great job they did. And and honestly, it is what it is. Um, it's a great set. The collector's boxes, I probably will buy some. I definitely am going to get the collector's, the box topper version of... Uh, I'm definitely going to get the box topper version of the Grim Tutor. Because I think the Grim Tutor is very good and I need it for my decks. And having like... I play combo decks in EDH. So having another tutor for free mana is just like insane. It's so, so good. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely insane. Um, and I love it. I think it's great. Uh, I think it is one of the best things you can do. Anyway, that is it. Hi, guys.